Welcome. This is David Bowles, Human Meme. Today's topic, plucking and withering are inseparable. When to the sessions of sweet silent thought, I summon up remembrance of things past. I sigh the lack of many a thing I sought, and with old woes, new wail my dear time's waste. Then can I drown an eye, unused to flow, for precious friends hid in death's dateless night, and weep afresh love's long since cancelled woe, and moan the expense of many a vanished sight. Then can I grieve at grievances foregone, and heavily from woe to woe tell over the sad account of forebemoaned moan, which I knew pay as if not paid before. But if the while I think on thee, dear friend, all losses are restored and sorrows end. William Shakespeare, Sonnet 30. Well, my human meme friend, those are wise words, reminding us that we are forever stuck in sorrow, regret, and longing, and that all of that is the basis of the afterthought of our human condition. We hope for love, we search for joy, we define the faith of the exhumed. And yet, we fail as a people, failing to alleviate all suffering and loss, failing against all ambivalence against the universe. We often watch the stars for guidance. We want to believe there is more to this life than just us. But the universe reminds us tells us, not the heavens, the universe reminds us that we must not want to reveal that we become known, that we are alone, and that we will always be that way. And the lesson in all of this is we need to be comfortable with who we are at birth and at the end of life, because everything else in between is merely a cry against the loneliness we work so hard to overcome. You'd think we'd take better care of ourselves and the world since it belongs to us alone, but we fail to care about that. We just want what we want right now, and we'll pay for it all later when we're back to dead. And we spin the circle again and again to close the arc of the loop we want our losses restored. We want fair play. We want to be treated right, even if we mistreat others. We are selfish and oblique and obliged to look out only for our own self-interests. But the artists among us and the poets around us urge us on to be better than our smallness. The aesthetic may have failed themselves, torn asunder by their own littleness of spirit and their human failings. But it is just that failure to thrive that urges on the poet and the artist, urges them to reveal to us their secret humility without regret or forbearance, because they know what we cannot confess. The aesthetic among us know we are imperfect and broken and in need of stitching in the soul. And we know, the most of us know, that Shakespeare was one of those to follow and to abide. And yes, Orson Welles, actor, director, producer was also such a soul stitcher. And sure, Orson Welles was flawed. He was brilliant, bright, a prodigy, an ongoing genius into adulthood and at the end of his life. 
until, like us all, he became human, and he fractured and fell into the deep end of despair against a raging world. We are both our failings and our genius leaps forward. Orson Welles's film and radio work are still unparalleled. And if you don't know who I'm talking about, Orson Welles, O-R-S-O-N-W-E-L-L-E-S, look him up. And then watch his movie, Citizen Kane, and listen to his radio show, War of the Worlds, and then just maybe you'll begin to see the immense greatness riddled before you. Ah, to be such a master of woe and love. And now, my human meme friend, I am proud to present to you in this time of worldly despair, as we search for who we were and what we hope to become and what we should make of each other in this dark time, Orson Welles comes back for us from the beyond. In a brief reflection, in this revealing letter he wrote to a friend who was mourning the loss of his spouse. Right after this was recorded, Orson Welles himself would die a few weeks later. And so, this next little bit of audio begins with Orson Welles briefly talking to his cat, asking her not to cry. It's right at the beginning. Don't be thrown off by that. Because what follows that is this. An unfallow experience, a soothing moment, and an unbreakable and essentially necessary time of thinking and feeling. And we become the flower, and we are immediately become the giver and the taker of this magnificent life. Well, don't cry, please, baby. There are never many, never enough of them, but there are men born into the world with a gaze fixed on the widest possible horizon. Men who can see without strain beyond the most distant horizon into that unconquered country we call the future. Here are some words by one such man, which I'd like to dedicate to another such man. This is for you, Bill. Great spirit of Charles Lindbergh is flying the sky into history. And here are the thoughts he wrote down about it. Within the hour, I'll land, and strangely enough, I'm in no hurry to have it pass. I haven't the slightest desire to sleep. There isn't an ache in my body. The night is cool and safe. I want to sit quietly in this cockpit and let the realization of my complete flight sink in. It's like struggling up a mountain after a rare flower, and then when you have it within arm's reach, realizing the satisfaction and happiness lie more in the finding than the plucking. Plucking and withering are inseparable. I almost wish Paris were a few more hours away. It's a shame to land with a night so clear and so much fuel in my tanks. It's for you, Bill. Thank you for listening. Be a human meme.